Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, here recently, I've done a couple of videos about some Raspberry Pi cases that were kind of like a desktop replacement style cases, something that you would just throw in your desk, have a little case that looked good while it sat there and did what it does. But uh, recently, uh, during one of those, or in the comment section of one of those videos, somebody uh, kind of brought my attention back to the Desk Pi Pro case uh, that I had seen before, but completely spaced. And so I reached out to Desk Pi and they agreed to send over their Desk Pi Pro. So in this video, I want to take a look at it and kind of show you uh, the setup process and then also talk about some of the temps I got, uh, both uh, baseline as well as over clock. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, guys, so here is the Desk Pi Pro. This was sent over to me, like I said before, by Desk Pi, and uh, they wanted me to take a look at this. Actually, I wanted to take a look at this. I reached out to them, uh, but here we can see all of the, the features on the back as far as what it comes with. But if you're we're gonna kind of cover all of this as we go. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open. Now I will say that I have had it open before. I just kind of give it a quick look, make sure everything uh, was was in place and whatnot. So here is the case, uh, both sides of this. Uh, of course, you're not gonna be able to see that in any good focus. Let me, yeah, so the, the both the front here, you can tell that's the front because it's got the power button right there. Uh, as well as on the back, I uh, have an acrylic plate here. Now this is gonna be good for obviously having a great uh, face shield or shield for your IO and whatnot, but because it's acrylic, it shouldn't affect uh, your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, or anything like that. Um, of course, these are both still covered in in the, pa uh, the, the, the sticky tape uh, paper stuff. We'll take that off here in a bit, but that is the, uh, the overall case. And we've got some accessories. And then of course, We've got some instruction manuals that I'm sure in order to get this set up correctly, I will take a look at the instruction manual uh, to make sure that I do it right. So let's set that aside. And let's actually set that aside. Let's pop this open and see what we've got going on in here. Um, it looks like we've got uh, some adapters for uh, the heat sink as well as the micro SD card in there, some screws, some standoffs, that sort of thing. Uh, we've also got um, a, a, an ice tower cooler or uh, something similar to that anyway, with two heat pipes. Okay, those are copper with some aluminum there. Uh, those do make contact directly, so I dig that. And of course, we've got our, our five volt uh, power supply for that. I believe this is actually a PWM, so we should be able to control uh, the fan speed there. Actually, I just realized my mic is in a terrible position. All right, so hopefully that'll be a little bit better. So uh, like I said, the ice uh, tower style uh, heat sink with two copper heat pipes that do make direct contact uh, with your five volt connector there that'll plug in uh, to the to the uh, IO pins. Uh, we've got a USB-C cable there. Um, let's see, we've got, we got some sort of a, a spacer here. I'm sure I will run into the use for that uh, at some point, but just a little spacer there. Um, let's see, oh, we've got, an IO uh, can, uh, adapter board. It looks like that will uh, plug in to the Raspberry Pi uh, via a ribbon cable on this side and the IO pins on this side. So we'll go ahead and give that a look. I believe that will uh, connect us to uh, these IO pins right here on the back. <clears throat> and then a power supply. Uh, this should be like five volts, three amps, give or take. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, five volts, three amps uh, on there uh, with just a, a standard thing there. I believe this is quick charge 3.0 compatible, uh, so we should get all of the speeds that we need. Oh, and then of course, there's also this. Uh, this can be your USB 3 adapter uh, to attach uh, the USB 3 port uh, on here to uh, the piece or the uh, USB port here for the internal storage that we're going to take a look at uh, here in just a moment, actually. Uh, we also get an Allen key. Uh, I've got some Allen keys, but I want to make sure I've got the right one uh, to take off uh, these bolts here so that we can get these face plates off. Yeah, we'll deal with that in a minute. So next thing we need to do is actually remove uh, some screws here on the bottom that's holding uh, all this hardware in here. Uh, this did not come with this screwdriver. Uh, this is one that I just had laying around here. And there, it just fell out. Um, maybe there was just too much pressure uh, with these screws on this end. That should be good. Hopefully, there we go. So now we've got all this hardware that we can take out. We'll take a look at that. Make sure I get that screw out of there. Set those apart. Of course, those are laser cut. They look really good. And that's it, man. This is this is a good solid aluminum case. It looks like it's gonna have lots of good airflow. 
Uh, so yeah, let's set that aside. And then here we've got all of the different pieces. It looks like our Raspberry Pi is just gonna uh, plug directly into here. Uh, so let's start maybe taking some of this apart. All right, so this is kind of an interesting board here. This is gonna be our, uh, our, our controller board for our internal storage, uh, whatever we wanna use to boot from, or, or I guess you could, if you wanted to still use a micro SD card uh, to boot your Raspberry Pi from and use this as additional storage, uh, though I don't recommend that. But uh, what's actually really cool about this uh, is that you've got a couple of options here. And right now, uh, this is set up to be an M.2 uh, drive set up here. It looks like a 2280, I believe, uh, is what this is set up for by default. Of course, you could move uh, this screw down uh, to fit other sizes within certain specs. Um, but uh, right now, like I said, this is set up for M.2. But if we take these two screws off, and like this. Now, I will say the one thing about if you decided to put an M.2 drive in here, um, even though uh, uh, NVMe is rated at uh, 10 gigs, uh, SATA, of course, is rated at six, SATA three is anyway. Um, so you're, you're not gonna get the full uh, potential speeds out of your M.2 drive if you decided to use that. Uh, but just something to be aware of is you will have a little bit of lost speed if you decide to go that route. Uh, what I am gonna do though, is uh, put in this drive, this is the same uh, SSD that we used in the last video I did, uh, where I showed the Geekworm uh, a case that was kind of similar to this. Um, but, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those two screws back in to hold things in place. Oops, they, they actually did a really good job with their engineering there, just kind of putting some forethought into uh, what they can do to use the fewest number of screws, but still give a ton of options for, uh, for the way this case is put together. All right, so there we go. There is our uh, SSD ready to go. Again, this is like a 250 gig uh, Kingston drive. So that's ready to go there. All right, so also there is this. Uh, this micro SD card will actually plug in this way. Like so, and those holes line up. But this uh, will actually tie into uh, this other little ribbon cable uh, right here. Those will actually end up getting plugged in together. Um, so that way we can get uh, connectivity for that. So it looks like what we're gonna do is something, nope. Something kind of like this, I believe. Uh, I do wanna verify that though. So that should go like that, uh, according to the picture that I've got over here. So then we wanna use, looks like one of these uh, round screws. That, and of course that'll give us a little wiggle room to move some things around. Um, and then of course we'll take this one like so, and it'll go over here on this other side. All right, and I believe this is gonna go this way. All right, and it looks like they've included a little thermal pad there. And these arms do bend a little bit in order to get a good amount of tension uh, on, on the actual install here. So we're gonna bend those down. Okay, so this is gonna go this way. This is that expansion board. Uh, it's gonna go right on there, like so. That looks good. And then that spacer that we were looking at a minute ago actually is meant to go right in here. Like so. Oh, that looks good. All right, so now we can start working on getting this thing. This is gonna go this way, like so. There we go. And then now, now things are starting to make some more sense. All right, so now we wanna plug, let's pull that aside, there we go. So now what we wanna do is actually plug in uh, this right here for the micro SD card. That should go right nice and easily into that slot there. There we go, a uh, little fidgety, but it works. And then we'll pull, Oh, that just pulls forward and this should line up in there. All right, there we go. That looks better. It just took, like I said, it's a little fidgety to get it all together there, but uh, that's that. The other thing we wanna do here is actually take uh, the, the, the fan controller here, or the, the power cable rather, and plug that in right over here, like so. Get that out of the way. That's looking pretty good now. So the next thing uh, we wanna do, of course, is make sure that all of this lines up uh, the way we want it to. Uh, also make sure that th these four 
or this little four pin receptacle plugs into that when you're putting all this together. Uh, you want to make sure that that is lined up when you press it together like that. All right, so there is uh, the internals all built, ready to go. Of course, this will be across the back. Uh, that's where uh, all of your I.O. is going to be. You have full size HDMI ports, which I really appreciate. Of course, you got your USB uh, C power there for everything. Uh, of course, you got your PWM fan. You've still got access to your GPIO pens uh, here through this pass through. Plus, you've got a couple of USB ports on the front, as well as a micro SD card slot on the front that you can still access uh, for additional storage and that sort of thing. So I think what we need to do next uh, is actually get it back in the case. So what we want to do here is make sure that uh, our pins uh, line up so that the pins here on the back go to the back and we can just kind of slide all of this through here. Maybe, there we go. Like so. And then let's go ahead and peel this. Of course, I have the worst luck peeling these. All right, and there we go. It's all put together now. I think that looks actually really, really good. Uh, I'm stoked with that. It's a bit of a process to get it all together. Oh, that might have actually helped if I put those screws in the bottom. All right, there we go. Now, now everything is solid. Yay. Okay, so last we've got this. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, I guess you could do that. Take that off or you can leave it on there. So we'll just go ahead and uh, put this together. So now we've got our storage connected to a Raspberry Pi. And now we should be able to plug this in, boot it up, and uh, get a signal from it and check out how well it works. So at this point, I got the Pi OS set up and updated. And once that was done, I installed the Dusk Pi software. I'll have links to that in the description. And I got it configured. And once that was up and running, uh, I started a baseline stress test on the system. And temps only got around 51C uh, in my living room that's approximately 24C. Uh, so really good temps as far as that was concerned. And of course, this left some room for overclocking. So I overclocked the CPU to 2000 megahertz and the GPU to 600 megahertz. And I noticed the temperatures only got to about 54, 55 degrees, which is still, still within good range as far as operating temperatures are concerned. Okay, guys, there you go. There is the Desk Pi Pro. I'm going to give a big shout out to Desk Pi uh, for allowing me to check this out, sending it over to me. So definitely check this case out. I really do think uh, as far as the desktop cases, uh, the desk desktop style cases rather uh, that I've reviewed lately, this is kind of uh, the champion, the king of kings sort of thing. Uh, it does everything I wanted it to do. I love that you've got options between using an M.2 or an SSD uh, for your storage if you want to do that. Uh, plus getting full access to additional ports on the front, the SD card port on the front, all of that. They just did an amazing job making sure that this was the most user-friendly interface you could have. So thank you to DeskPy for sending this over, letting me take a look. I will have a link in the description for, well, for everything, uh, the scripts that you'll need, uh, a link to the case, that sort of thing. Links to all of that in the description down below if you want to check any of this out. Uh, I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons. You know what? Besides that, I want to give a big shout out to uh, everybody who stuck with me. I know there were, there was some questionable videos that I've done uh, here recently as far as promotional things, things like that. But I, I want to give a big shout out to you guys who stuck around, who, who kind of put up with me uh, doing some different things. Uh, you guys are the reason I'm able to do the things that I do. And I'm going to make a conscious effort moving forward to make sure the content really does fit the channel before I agree to do any kind of content with anybody. So I want to give a big shout out to everybody who watches my content, uh, despite some of the tomfoolery that I've had on here recently. Thank you guys so much for letting me do what I want to do with my channel from time to time and make this kind of content for you guys uh, to give my opinions and that sort of thing. So thank you to everybody out there who watches the content, whether you support financially, whether you share my videos or just watch my videos. You guys are all rock stars. Thank you so much for all of that. But with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.